I decided to, to focus on consistency and authenticity. This is what nationally people were looking for. I did a call using kind of the network of people across the sector, including participants in the um, in the webinars. But some of the things is really, if you are using this approach, some of the things to really think about at this stage, first of all, if it's going to be local, discipline for me in this case was really key because discipline is, is, is where everything happens in teaching and learning. I think a lot of research has showed that. So the inclusion criteria was they had to be part of a disciplinary group. So I wasn't doing transdisciplinary or cross-disciplinary in this situation. I was looking at the disciplines because these are where they, a lot of the, the unit of kind of change happens. And they obviously have to experience work, based learning. They have to have an interest in finding solutions to the challenges. They had to identify a key contact, and this is key later when I'm talking about actions later, needed to be a key contact. They needed to have representatives from the three, st three stakeholders, the students, the practitioners, and the, the on-campus higher education staff. And I needed to make sure there was a diversity of disciplines representing different contexts. So what did the methodology um, looked like was there were interviews there was a national survey of, of expert authors. There was a national survey data that I had access to, but I'm going to particularly focus on this part here, which is the solution focused online workshops. And just to show that I had nine disciplines in the end, two that were based on campus work integrated learning. So those were people who use project work, problem based learning types of things that were very linked with with work, the workplace. And then on camp, I said on placement, um, hospitality, survey construction management, teacher education, business information systems that were on placement that primarily went out and then were assessed by what when they came back on campus by some sort of reports. And then on placement where they were assessed by the practitioner was occupational therapy, veterinary nursing and physiotherapy. So I had eight or nine, I had eight institutions and nine disciplines. And there were students, practitioners and educators in, in all those groups. So um, COVID struck. <laughs> I thought I'd be doing the workshops, which was the research gather, data gathering um, thing. I thought I'd be doing it face to face and meeting people and being part of the communities, but COVID struck. So I had to bring it all online. So I'm sharing with you my online version, uh, my methodology from the online. But you could work this through if you were thinking of using it um, in, a, in a face to face as well. So this was the model I used building on the, the, P, the PRA approach, individual challenges, group challenges, group consensus, key challenges, then agreeing some, some challenges, developing some solutions and potential actions. So that's the methodology that I devised. I did have a research assistant or admin assistant doing the workshops, which was very useful for just managing the workshops and, and uh, I was very grateful that, for that support. So how did I start? Um, the first thing, there were students, there were, the workshops had about 15 to 20 in each workshop. And, um, and that was a good number because it was allowed in the three and a half hours, each workshop was three and a half hours. Um, but there were students in every workshop and, and there was also people hadn't met each other. So the, this individual thing is really key for allowing time for reflection and time for initial thoughts. So I started with a poll which showed their initial thoughts um, and, and, and the challenges that get them thinking. And I think, again, this is a good part of the methodology. So my particular question was, well, in relation to work um, related assessment, is it consistency, authenticity, or are you not sure as, as your key challenge? So that gave them a chance to start thinking. And then I wanted them to, to so again, considering their individual challenges, I got them to brainstorm individually what their three or four assessment of feedback challenges were. And this was key because it allowed them time to think um, because particularly for students, they were allowed some time to think about what they thought before they were thrown into a group discussion and, and had maybe felt that there was a power dynamic that they felt they may not be able to actually, um, you know, speak up. So allow them time to put their thoughts down. So in this case, the, the methodology of kind of the Jamboard was very, very useful for getting notes. And the, the students, academic staff, practice educators, professional sports staff had a different page where they put them down. 
um, and again around authenticity or consistency. So that gave quite a bit of data, but it, the, it allowed them time to think. Um, so then the next part is to, to go into group and PRA really needs group consens con consensus and group discussion. They need to talk through their, their challenges. This idea of interstakeholder dialogue as De Bruyne talked about it. So to understand shared challenges and to start to develop some consensus, um, that we put them into breakout groups. But they've already now thought of things on their own. And they were asked to, as you often do at breakout groups, to have a chair. The key thing here was I actually got the students to be the first set of chairs in the groups. And each, each uh, workshop would have had maybe sort of three or four breakout groups, given the numbers. They had about 20 minutes. And they needed to highlight three or four common. So they had thought about individually, and now they were thinking of common challenges. And the student reported back. So this data was audio recorded. Um, so I had, had so from my research point of view, I had audio recorded um, this date, this data. Then we needed to, then what was quite challenging, if this was done in a face-to-face, -face, we would have a chance to kind of kind of synthesize some of these themes. A challenge in Zoom was to actually pull together the three breakout groups into some common themes. So we gave a break at this stage to, to the group um, workshop. And myself and the research assistants collated the breakout ch groups uh, challenges into 10 broad themes. So on the spot, while they were having a break, we came up with the 10 themes on the spot uh, that were coming through from the reporting back of, of the groups. And then we presented these back to the, the whole group and they voted on them. So this is an example of the main challenges from one particular workshop um, and, and it weighted them. So this particular group talked about inconsistency and in expectations of assessors, impact of the amount and volume of exposure to different skills, placement doesn't have all competencies, we're making up scenarios. So these were their top three, the others are still there. Um, and we, we fed that back to them. So the data we had here was the poll results um, and this data here weighted. In other aspects of um, using PRA, there are other ways to get this consensus. And when I used it before with a group of physiotherapy students in UCD, myself and Sinead McMahon, and one of the things that we used was this thing called a pie chart. And this is where you get students into, or students or, or people into groups. And they come up with their themes themselves, but they have to weight them. It's about trying to get the priority of what's the important challenge. And in rural development, as it was done, it was nearly things on the sand. You can use string, you could use a whiteboard where you can actually um, move the boundaries. But the idea is that the group negotiate, well, do you know this square here, this, this, sorry, I should say, this slice of the pie here is the biggest challenge and they negotiate that. So they're coming up with a consensus of what they think is important. Uh, so that was another way to do it, not done in my research this time around, but that's what I did before. But things like the card sorting and that is something that was equally used for that. Um, then we put them back into some breakout groups and they had to come up with some solutions to the top three challenges. So the research is about developing solutions. It is research, as I say, is not about doing onto, it's about working with groups to make them come up with their own solutions and actions. So we put them back into breakout groups and they had to discuss the top three. So in this situation, this group would have been, sorry to go back to the previous slide, would have been talking about these three. So what are the solutions to these three challenges now that we've prioritized these three for, for this group, for this workshop? So they took those three and they discussed them. And they, they um, this is the details if you want to have a look at it again, but, but basically again, they had to describe and come up with some solutions and put them into a shared document. Um, and this, in this situation, I got one of the staff to report back. So the data we had here was the word document notes, the audio of the report back, and they came up with some solutions. Then we opened up the whole thing to a plenary. The final kind of step was some actions. So we opened up to all in the group, as I say, they were, they were between kind of 10 and 20-ish in the, in the workshops, in each workshop. 
what would be some actions to this? What will therefore, what could you do? Um, and again, the data was collected by notes on the discussion. Um, the research assistant took some notes on the discussion as it was happening, trying to kind of highlight some of the actions that people were coming up with. And there's an audio recording of the plenary. So um, this was the instructions, you know, come up with some short term wins, some easy solutions. Um, who would need to be involved? Think about these. When when would they start, finish? Um, have you all had a chance to have a say? So, so that was kind of the plenary that we, we gave to them. So these are some examples of one particular work, workshop in its raw state. Um, you know, some of it might have been like to define consistent skills, to be evidence during rotations in each stage in conjunction with the supervisors, to clarify expectations for students, supervisors and clinical sites. So that, you know, so each had about, you know, between 10 and 12 actions. The key thing about the actions and the key thing about the data that I've talked about is that I gathered the, the Jamboard notes, the poll notes, the, um, the, the, all the, all the solutions, the document of all the solutions, the document of all the actions. And the key aspect of this research is that I shared it back immediately in its very raw state, not tidied up, not anything, not me trying to put a spin on it as it was back to everybody in the group. So they got immediately actions, they got immediate solutions, they got the detail of, of it was. And it was key then that they had this. And um, the, eyes, you know, the, the key contact for the progression of the things was, was, the, was the key contact. Um, but they, the, everybody in the group got back within a day or two, everything that was got in the workshop. So I did do a, a, um, a quick sort of feedback on it. Um, and that's a really important aspect is, is, is as you're doing kind of, um, this is one particular method, as I say, but it, as you're doing any of these methods, you need to get feedback on them. And the question that I asked, and that I was particularly, because I was keen on this idea about empowerment, I did ask them, the, all the participants, you know, afterwards in, in a little survey, you know, this aim to empower participants have a say in actions. Do you feel that's was successful in the workshop? So this one got 4.75 out of five. And then the, the workshop aimed to dialogue between those involved in assessment and feedback. Students, higher education staff, did you feel this was successfully achieved in this workshop? And again, the, the idea of dialogue between multiple stakeholders was 4.82 out of uh, five. So it's very successful in empowerment and participation in the group. And some of the quotes from those in the uh, group were, um, you know, there was a good collaboration between students, academic staff and hospital supervisors, all integral to the success of students during placement, and all were present to contribute to the future of this essential part of the studies. Another quote, really valuable experience to get input from all aspects and points of view. Great to find out, find and excellent identify common themes and potential solutions. And then this one was a student. It was really helpful as a student to talk to practice edu educators and learn their perspectives on work-based assessment. And I felt as if we were discussing the topic as equals rather than as talking to our supervisors. So this idea of power and feeling that they had a say was really, really key. So I've talked at you um, and I just want to maybe open it up there for a min minute. Sorry, Geraldine, I think the sound is gone. I have access to the data from my um, 
ethical ethics and that. So I, I had the data for a certain length of time based on my ethics, but the data was anonymized and sent back and that was all clear in the ethics. So that answers that question. There's another question. Were the focus groups discipline specific or mix a difference? That's a very good question. I deliberately did the um, workshops discipline specific. And the reason for that in this situation was that was where the change was going to happen. So um, when you think of it like veterinary nursing had their placements and they would be needed to working with their professional body and they needed to change in that context. So it was deliberately discipline specific, but it may not always make sense, but my unit of change for this was discipline specific. Yeah, so, so that's was that question. I hope that answers that question. Um, can I ask what the difference between participatory research and action versus participatory action research? I think the difference really, participatory action research comes from the educational, and I think its strength is more the action. Uh, the participatory research in action is this particular roots in the rural development originally, although it has been used in social work, health sciences, and has been taken off. But it, the, the participatory research in action pushes group consensus uh, sharing. So there is overlap in some of the principles, but they have some slight differences. And the participation is particularly strong in the participation research in action. Whereas I think the action and the process is, is, is a little stronger in the other one. And the group consensus is, is particularly in, in the approach that I used. So that's a very good question. Thanks for that. Okay, any other questions while I I'm going to probably go back? Did you use any iterative cycle to use your method? I didn't use an iterative cycle like you would in the action research. It's not quite like the action research, which has the review, plan, act, um, cycle. Uh, but it, and actually one of the strengths and one of the critiques of this approach is that you need to work with what makes sense for the discipline or the group. Um, so what methods you use and how you do them actually really need to be um, linked with what you, the purpose. So if there was a kind of a sequence, it might be more around sort of, you know, um, gathering the challenges, what are the solutions, what are the actions, and, and sort of the putting them back. So it's based more, um, it's not quite an iterative cycle, like I don't know, an action research cycle, but that would be kind of the broad kind of um, sort of approach to it, that makes sense. Um, I might take one more and then, then go on. And David, if there's anything you might pick up on that I've missed, but um, how, how roughly, how was the time broken down in the workshops, uh, workshops divided equally, greater focus on solutions? Yeah, so that to go back to my image, I would say up to the break, which was kind of the, the challenges and the actions was probably, sorry, the challenges and the um, coming up with the key challenges was probably half the workshop. So if, if it was three and a half hours, that was probably an hour and a quarter or something. And then the, the second half was the solutions and actions to so that breakdown. Yeah. Um, I don't know the answer to that framework, uh, the Zuber Skerritt's P-A-L-A-R framework. Sorry, I'm not, we can't answer that one. Maybe somebody else can come in on that one, but uh, sorry, I don't know the answer to that one um, in relation to Zuber Skerritt's framework. Sorry, I don't know about the answer, answer to that one. Apologies. Um, okay, I'm, I'm going to move on to the rest of the presentation and we'll have some time at the end to hear more questions. And David, if you see any questions in there I missed, maybe you might flag them to me at the end. Okay, you can still hear me? Is it okay? I can see you, Marie. Can people hear me okay? Yeah, great. Um, so I just want to talk a little bit about data analysis findings and dissemination, just a little bit more about this. For those interested in the actual findings, um, this was the whole group, 120 across the nine disciplines. So I then have this broader set of data. So there's the data for each workshop, each discipline that they got. But overall, then I've got 27 challenges of work-based assessment across our 308 solutions and 129 actions, not to mention all the, the, the qualitative data I have with it. Some of the themes that were coming up in this broadly, one of the top themes was having clear expectations in the assessment of work integrated learning, you know, clear expectations. Also the idea of having more interstakeholder dialogue, not unlike the research approach, empowering students managing competencies. In the student survey data, which I haven't really talked about, but 33% of the comments were related to around authenticity. 
Um, and then consistency, which is in the blue, was more of a challenge in placements that were assessed by the practitioner than they were, say, in, in placements assessed on campus. Um, and then the authenticity was um, kind of probably the greatest challenge in, in, in this one here, which is where they were assessed by the educator back on practice, but kind of small changes. Uh, the waiting for the researchers when I talked to them, that they, they um, really thought authenticity was a very, very important, less so consistency. But when I looked at the Jamboard data, which is small data, but it's interesting data, that the, the Jamboard data, I kind of coded it by the different um, challenges. So I read through them and I coded them whether they were authenticity, consistency, both or other. So blue here is authenticity. Um, and the grey is a consistency as a challenge. So if you look at the students, for example, the students are much more concerned about consistency than they are about authenticity. They're particularly concerned. Interesting, higher education staff are saying, well, it needs to be meaningful and authentic and valuable and slightly less around the consistency, although both were kind of high. So slight differences in, in the field from the Jamboard data. The interesting thing about data analysis in this approach is that in some ways the participants are theming the first bit of it for you because they, if you think of it, they have highlighted and voted on what's most prioritized in their eyes. So they've already done a little bit of analysis by just running these workshops or, or again, that there's other ways to do it um, because they have come up with a group consensus and they have come up with a prioritization. So in some ways, they kind of do the first bit of the analysis for you in a way, um, because they're coming up with their own themes. But I will be doing, and, and the timing of this was, I just finished this research in December last, and I'm now starting to work through in a sort of a deeper understanding of the audio data and the discussion notes through a th thematic analysis. Uh, Braun and Clark is what I, I, I will be using and I've started to use. And I've put a lot of the data into Max QDA and I'm working through, so I'll have a deeper understanding um, of, of sort of that kind of data. That again, for those interested in, in assessing work integrated learning, um, a key thing about um, the sharing aspect is this, is that I have shared this back, um, my, my findings to date um, in a in National Forum QQI kind of a symposium. I've shared it back in a report. Um, and the three things about it are, and, and this is really, really important. It needs to be shared back to the participants or to people who can help make changes in this. If you want to, again, it is about sharing and trying to change policy and practice. And these were sort of the common themes in assessing of work integrated learning. Um, people, the participants were looking for more to talk, more dialogue, um, about this area. The terminology matters. Uh, one of the things in that was feedback is a part of assessment is really key. And that assessing work integrated learning was a useful term because work-based learning sounds like it was all out in practice, whereas actually the whole curriculum in this is really key. The, the managing manageable set of competencies was really important. There wasn't too many competencies and that's really got implications for professional accreditation bodies. The grading approaches are, are really kind of need to be looked at. There was a lot of challenges and difficulties where there was percentages used in placement and then students were going to different placements and were getting inconsistent grading because it's very hard in very different contexts to use percentages as a grading or even grades. So pass, fail, not competent, not yet competent were ones that seem to, to work better in placement. But we really need to look at that and the institution and the sort of different policies and implications there. The practitioner needs more professional development. It needs much more around assessment. We needed to empower students more and students wanted real life experiences in the curriculum. So some of these lean towards authenticity and some lead to consistency. So to go back to, so the, I, I can certainly talk to people more if they're interested in the findings of the actual research. There is a, a, the report out. Um, and this is just out recently. So this is just at uh, the National Forum just um, put this up very recently, um, about, a, about two or three weeks ago. But the first thing I did was shared it back with the participants. So I emailed every participant, all 120 of this report. 
So again, they have, I know it was to do with the whole thing, not just theirs, but again, it's sharing back so that they can own the, own as much as own the data. Um, and I pres I've already started to present it, as I mentioned uh, there at the end in December to the National Forum Vital Week. Quality QQI, have, have, I've met them about this and the findings of this. Um, I might be doing some follow-up session with them because it impacts on what they're doing. And I talked to the National Forum Student Assembly to give back to the student voice. And, and both the presentation there and the link to the report is there. But this sharing is really key. A couple of critiques about it. Um, it isn't for everything and it's not for every type of research. Um, there's the, the, credit, the, the quick and dirty, as, as Robert Chambers originally described it, is a good thing in one way. It, it's giving quick solutions back to those who can do something with it very quickly. But the, you know, some of the, the so there's been critique about um, the credibility of it, if it's quick and dirty, and there's the argument that, what well, is it rigorous research? So just go back to my, my other point here. So therefore, there does really need to be a triangulation of methods. It does need to, you know, so it's not without rigor, but, you know, there is a, a group that don't like it because they see it as not kind of scientific research. So there is that critique. It is qualitative. It does fall in the qualitative. There are some quantitative stuff that come from it, but it is an essay. So it's not for big data things. It's really more local emphasis, community emphasis. Um, the facilitators' attitudes um, to the community are really key. It, if the facilitator, if I didn't believe in this approach and I was told to do it, I don't think it would work because you do need to go with the essence and principles of it. So you do, it, it's not for everybody. Some people may not find, might find it doesn't suit them. And um, the timeline is too short. If the timeline, the timeline needs to be longer. And if there was one thing I would say about my own research, which I suppose I have no control over, was I had a year to, from beginning to end to do it. Um, so I couldn't really follow up on actions with the groups. That's why the key contact for me was really important because if they followed up with actions, but it would be more ideal if you were doing it over a slightly longer period of time, uh, because then you could follow up with actions or you could see are they following with actions. So the timeline needs to be, look, uh, this is a nice quote, one clue success is the duration of a process. Social change based on mutual recognition, understanding needs a long-term approach, which multiplies the opportunities for interaction around stakeholders. And time to reflect and learn um, to be empowered, sorry, to be empowered. So. It's not something you could do very quickly, so it does need a slightly longer. Facilitation skills required and rigor needed for, for, for a triangulation. So in summary, um, the key things with it are, and what differs to some of the other approaches that some of you have mentioned, is that participation is central, nearly more so than action. The actions in this ones are more developed from it. Uh, so meaningful actions and solutions are, are generated. So it's actions and solutions that kind of there. And some really nice um, older and recent studies um, done, done in this, Chambers is a more recent one. Um, interstate dialogue is really key. Group consensus is particularly important. And that's why some of the methods that you need, it's something about getting group consensus. The quick shared findings are really key. And then another key that's, is, is the practical, practical and flexible methods. So I will pause at that. I'm going to, well, actually, what I will do, so David, you can do the recording, is I'll just do the references so people can have them for the recording. They're the PRA references. And then for anybody interested, the references on assessing work integrated learning. So I will stop my share, maybe. Might be the best. OK. And Thank you, Geraldine. Yeah. Very, very much. It's been really terrific. Uh, 